Hey guys, how you doing? So I have a bunch of questions here I'm going to answer or uh, that were put under my last video. And uh, yeah, let's just jump into it. So I got somebody made a comment here. He says, uh, AI will replace all digital jobs very soon. Hopefully it will replace all the manual labor as well. So <laughs> I've been doing this for 30 years, 30 years software development. So what does that mean? It means I have a pretty good understanding of software. I have a pretty good understanding of the ebbs and flows of things, how technologies evolve. I've seen it all happen over the last 30 years. Uh, another thing is I've been in business for decades now. So I understand the business end of software as well. I actually have a SaaS product, Studio Web, which I brought to market, have government and quasi-government institutions use it, private institutions. So I understand the whole thing. So something I said when AI first came out, I took a look. Ooh, ChatGPT, let's look. I took a look and I, and I said, yeah, and you can watch the video. I said, you know what? It's going to have an impact, but it's going to be uh, horizontal and marginal. It's not going to be deep. It's going to be a shallow impact that's going to affect many industries, but in a shallow way. My um, prediction within the first uh, few days, if not, you know, if you're in the first few weeks, rather, maybe even the first few days, I've go check of the release of the uh, ChatGPT uh, was proven to be true so far. I know people in the AI industry, I know people who supply AI, who leverage AI, who implement AI. Anyway, long story short, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You're starting to see it reflected in the AI market as well. You're starting to see uh, some of the big players, I think it was Goldman Sachs, uh, said, uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're shortening the AI plays because they're starting to realize that AI is not this uh, meteor uh, that was going to blow up all industries as they suggested initially. You have to understand, when a new technology is released, you have a hype cycle. So the hype cycle is, you know, it's the cycle where they hype up the technology, they hype up the product, they tell you how amazing the product is to get people excited and uh, Bob's your uncle, the way it goes, right? So um, AI, even the founder, uh, well, one of the co-founders, uh, Altman, Sam Altman, I think his name is, of OpenAI, the ChatGPT nerd, he said it himself. He said that AI won't see any significant upgrades to it for a while now. And that's typical when a new technology is released. You see, it gets released. So they've been working on it for years. So that the audience, uh, or the public rather, doesn't see the work in the development of AI all behind closed doors. They just don't see it. So when it is finally released, so when they release ChatGPT, they realized, or they took it to the point where they said, okay, this technology can have some sort of application, some sort of use case. So they release it in the public. So the public sees nothing, and then they see this big change. Holy geez, look at this new technology. So our brains, being as they are, uh, then is conditioned to think that, look how quickly AI came about. And so our, our expectations, our emotional expectations, that we're going to see the same rate of improvement, right? We saw nothing, and boom, this big explosion. So our brain uh, gets fooled into thinking, fooled, F-O-O-L-E-D, uh, gets fooled into thinking that there's going to be the same rate of ascension, same rate of change and growth. No. So that's why a lot of these guys, they see, they make these comments like AI replace all jobs because their brains have been fooled into thinking that it went from zero to 100 and it's going to easily go to two, three, four, five hundred. But what they don't know is that the years and years of work was put into getting it to, to the point where it was released. So when the founder of ChatGPT, the co-founder, says, hey, we're not going to see big developments in AI for a while now. It's hit plateau. I've talked about this many times. There are, uh, there are growth cycles in technology, and inevitably, in every industry, there's a plateau. So I'm talking about plateau. You know, you see big growth, big growth. So, you know, this is a rate of change, steep curve. Then it starts flattens out. Whoop, flattens out. That's the plateau. The plateau, 
that means then you're not going to see too much change. It's going to be slow progress going forward. I can give you a couple examples in the technology space where this has happened. The most obvious is with smartphones, right? iPhone comes out, huge leap ahead because you have the first phone where you have uh, an all screen keyboard, right? It's all just screen, no, no plastic keys. Boop, 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 boop. Fantastic. Since the iPhone came out, I think it was 2007, we haven't really seen huge innovations. The cameras are better, the screens are better, they're lighter, uh, the battery power lasts longer, you know, better CPUs. But what has happened in the last, whatever, since 2007, it's like, was that uh, 15 years or so? Uh, what has happened in uh, the evolution of smartphone technology is not nearly as great as when the changes between, you know, the BlackBerry, which was dominant, the keyboard, the plastic keyboard, versus the, the iPhone all screen uh, smartphone. The rate of change has been very incremental and slow over the last 15 years or so. We're starting to see the, the beginnings of a, a fairly big change where we're going to have folding phones, right? We've seen a couple of those, but they're not widespread. And even that is not that's such a huge leap forward in terms of tech. So there you go. You have this technology, smartphone, which is a massive industry, massive business. Like, you know, half of Apple's profits, at one point, 75% of their profits were from the iPhone. So if there was ever an incentive to... Uh, to, to improve a technology, definitely in the smartphone market because there's so much money in it. So even in that wildly successful and huge market, the smartphone market, it's not just Apple, it's all the, all the smartphone manufacturers. Even in that space, we haven't seen a huge evolution, right? We haven't seen this big leap forward. We just see the incremental gains. Another example, is in the uh, web development space. So when web development came out, I was right there, buddy. I was right there. I had one of the very first websites in the world, period. But maybe one of the first three, 4,000. So I built my first website in 1994, started writing commercial code, 94, 95, and I've been at it ever since. So I've seen the evolution of web, of the internet and the web since the in its inception. When uh, I remember when famously when uh, Bill Gates said, ah, this whole internet thing, it's a fad, it's a fad. <laughs> I think Steve Jobs knew it was going to be a big thing. Anyhow, so, yeah, I remember in the time, at the time when the web just came out and I put up a website and I went to a friend uh, who had a, uh, uh, a business and he was doing a bit of web stuff as well. And I remember sitting in the back room of his, uh, of his commercial location. We're thinking, you know, this web could be a big thing. He goes, yeah, it could be. You know what we should do? We should just like buy up the domain names like coke.com and, uh, and business.com. All these domain names were all available. They were all there no, because nobody really, mm, it was that early on. Anyway, so I saw the big shift from thick client development, meaning writing apps that you install on a computer versus websites, which became eventually web apps. I saw that evolution. And that took time because Microsoft was really pushing hard against that because they saw the web as a threat against um, Windows dominance at the time. Anyway, so I saw that big evolution. I saw that change from thick client development to web apps. That took years, years and years. And then I saw the big change within the confines of web development. I saw the big change of going from a non standards based development to standards based development. That happened around 2003, 2002. That was another big shift. So that took from 95 to 2000, uh, 2003, 2002. So let's say 2003. So that took eight years for that, that to actually be achieved. And that's just getting everybody to agree upon how to write the code. So it's not like it's a huge innovation, you know? That took years. And then the last big change I saw in the web development space was in 2011, or was it 2010, something like that, when Steve Jobs effectively killed Flash development. Uh, if you don't know Flash, Flash was, was the standard, if you will, of developing uh, rich client applications in, uh, for web apps. Anyway, that got killed. 
And that was a big shift. And then HTML5 came into place. Like HTML5, CSS3, the web as we see it today, application development as we see it today, web app, application development as we see it today, um, kind of hit plateau, I'd say, around 2012, 2014, something like that, in those two years. It hasn't really changed much. So if you're looking, you know, HTML5 hasn't changed at all since those days. CSS3, CSS hasn't changed at all. JavaScript hasn't changed at all since those days. PHP, a little bit of change with PHP 8, a few things. Most of the changes in PHP 8 are enterprise, which most people never use. There's some interesting things in there, though. Point being, as even in the fastest moving space in the game, uh, web development and web design, it's plateaued. You know, it's it it it, it was 1994 up to 2003, and it's like been like this. It's been like this, very slow progression and change. So anyway, when it comes to the AI, again, as I said in other videos, I've seen technology. At least when it comes to coding and development. I've seen other technologies prior to AI, which were far more impactful, far more ground-changing, game-changing than AI. AI, as I said, uh, when it first came out, it's going to have a marginal, broad impact. You should learn it. It will help improve your, uh, it will help your workflows, and make you a little bit more productive. That's the extent of it. Um, I, was been ta I was talking actually a highly experienced developer, a guy who's still very active in his development. He says it, it he loves it loves using GPT and Copilot, but he says it makes mistakes, got to know what you're doing. He says it improves his, it speeds him up maybe by 10, 20%. It's good with boilerplate code, but you still got to know what you're doing. You still got to know what you're doing. So two last points I want to make. Number one, um, the, Achilles, the Achilles heel for AI is the processing. It requires major, major processing, major, major energy. It's already consuming huge amounts of energy, and we're just starting. So that's going to be an issue, because on the one hand, you've got people who want to cut down energy consumption because of concern about the environment and so on. And I'm not going to get into the politics of that. And on the other hand, you have people who, who want to implement, implement the AI, but the AI requires huge amounts of energy. Then you also got the Bitcoiners huge amounts of energy so something's gotta something's gotta push Some, there's good there's a push there's a push and a shove something's got to break right we were going to implement ai to its fullest capacity but we're going to have to burn shit loads of energy or we're not going to leverage ai to its fullest capacity but again let me remind you ai at its fullest capacity is not like uh it's not doing anything near what the doomers are saying it's going to do. Not even close. Don't worry about it. And the last point, I think the whole AI uh, space has once again revealed what I've been talking about before. Be, be careful about who you listen to, whether it be on YouTube or elsewhere. Like, I'm Uncle Steph. I've been doing it for three decades, fine. But look at who I am. Consider my uh, experience. Consider my who, who the source of information is. Like, does this guy know what he's talking about, right? Like, uh, I wouldn't talk to me about uh, the intricacies of jiu-jitsu. I've been doing martial arts for decades, but I don't know jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I know a little, a little bit about it, you know, versus the layman, I know a lot about it, but versus a, a you know, a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, I know nothing. So my uh, analysis of jiu-jitsu as it is today would be not very useful to you that's why i don't talk about it because it's not my thing you know other types of styles of fighting yeah i could talk about it but not that so when you listen to these people who are clearly quite young 20 something years old or younger you know 20 20 and, and they don't have any you can't have much experience right when you're that young um i would be reluctant to listen to these people for life advice you know because <laughs> they just started their babies you know they're babies. Um, no offense, but you know we all have we all you know we all have to learn. It takes time to learn. I'm telling you. I said it before. I'll say it again. You know when you the first three to four years in any uh, given field of study, you're still learning quite a bit. You know in the fourth year, you have learned so much more than what you knew in the first year, of course. And I figure with software development, I figure with software development in the first. 
by the fourth year, third, fourth year, depending on your skills and how much effort you put in, you're getting competent, right? You're getting competent. You're pro level. But you don't really, really get a deep understanding of software or fighting or business until I say about 10 years. When you get into 20, 30 year uh, mark, that's when you start really getting a deep, deep, deep understanding of whatever field of study you happen to be in. So when you're listening to somebody talk on YouTube or anywhere else, question who they are, right? You know, 20 year olds, I think to be great for dance videos and uh, modern dating videos and that kind of stuff, because that's what they're doing now, I guess. But it's like, you know, you wouldn't talk to me ancient 169 year old developer about you know how is it in the how's the nightclub scene today in 2024 i don't know i don't go to nightclubs so i don't talk about it so anyway, that's it so be very careful who you listen to the doomers are telling you have been telling you oh, ai is going to kill us within a year is it not even close <laughs> so if you're looking to get into development get into it start with the first language you're going to hit roadblocks that's normal. Remind yourself, here's a little learning tip. Anything that's hard to learn has value. If it's too easy, it has no value. So when you run into something that's hard, you run into roadblocks, uh, which, in, which is inevitable for most people, that's good. That means you're learning something new, you're learning something valuable. If something is valuable, you can make money with it. All right, I hope that's useful. I'm Uncle Steph. Let me know if you disagree with anything I've made, any comments I've made in this video in the uh, comments below. And I may answer, no promises, though. Cheers.